guys, welcome back. It is the next day. Concrete's been curing for not quite 12 hours, but we poured about 12 hours ago. And I just want to give you kind of an overview of what I think here. So the finish here is not perfect. Some spots are really, really good and some spots are not. And what happened is last night we were up till four in the morning waiting and like this part wouldn't dry, right? So we couldn't trowel this part. This part back here wouldn't dry. So it's not, you know, some of it's rough, some of it's really smooth. It's not perfect. Um, but I was here the whole time watching and it's just like, it wouldn't dry. That's, that's, that's what was going on. Um, over here where it first got poured and it was dry, it's nice and smooth, really good, right? So it looks polished and nice. Um, so overall, I think part of the problem was the cold weather, didn't allow it to set up quick enough to use the power trowel. Um, this side could have been troweled more, but it started drying too quick and we couldn't get the trowel over here in time. Um, so overall, like I'm happy to have a floor, but the finish is not perfect. Um, so we have a couple options, right? This, uh, this is gonna be covered with a bunch of flooring. Um, that part may or may not have flooring. So what I'm thinking is we might end up just polishing the whole thing, which sucks, it's a lot of work. But, uh, but if I want perfect, perfect, perfect over here, we can get a mirror finish with, uh, with using polish. But either way, this is what I've been waiting for for a long time. We have a hard floor. I can start doing stuff in here, put some stuff in here, but I'm gonna look into the polishing process. So, but in all reality for me, what makes this all worth it right now is somewhere for my kids to play and run around and have fun. You gonna ride your car, Adam? You wanna ride your bike in here? Yeah. We've never really had hard surface in the back for the kids to have a place to have fun and do stuff. So it's awesome to have that and to, uh, are you doing burnouts? You doing front wheel drive burnouts? Go, 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 go. That's it. That makes it all worth it right there. All right, this is a big day for me. This is the first time a jack is going to touch this floor. Won't be the last time. You sore? Nope, I'm strong. Look at that. What do you think? Is that a good spot to keep it? It's a good spot. What is this, Panama City? <laughs> All right guys, so a little bit of an update on the concrete. Um, it's been three days since we poured, I think. Today's Monday, we poured Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yeah. So, um, kids have been riding their bikes on it. I moved some of my tools over here and uh, cleaned up the drain area a little bit. Uh, the problem here is it's, it's not perfect, right? It's, uh, it's decent, but it's not perfect. There's a lot of imperfections that are showing and uh, I guess I'll show you a few of them. So for one, this drain, which we put in last minute, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not very level, right? This side over here is higher than this side. Um, not a huge deal, but it's not perfect, right? And the further you get down there, it's, it's more raised on that side. And to be fair, this is something we added like as the concrete was being poured. I went and ran to the store and was like, hey, can you guys throw this in there? And they did a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. Just can't be fixed. Like you can't, you, you either get it right the first time or not at all. So this is something I have to live with. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this, but I added this little uh, chain back here. So this goes down to the rebar and uh, just tied into the main structure of the rebar on the floor. So that'll be nice for doing some body work. But being hand finished around it, it's not perfect, right? Not great. Um, there's a lot of this going on where like it's just not, not perfect. The trowel didn't make it over here or it was kind of dark in this corner because the light is all the way over there and we were finishing in the middle of the night. And uh, there's a lot of stuff like that going on. There's a, there's a ridge here of where of where it's finished, right? And then not, so there's like, it's just, there's a lot of that going on. So like, yeah, here where the trowel was, it's really smooth, looks good, but it's not consistent. It's not consistent all the way through. And anything past there is fine, right? Because the wall's gonna be right there. But there's a lot going on that's kind of like this. Um, and this part was still wet when we left. It was like 3.30 in the morning, we were still running the trowel and it was just wet. It sucked. 
Um, there's a lot of, this was all hand troweled and it just isn't great, right? There's like dips and valleys here. Um, this wasn't finished very well. Some of the plastic got folded over right there. So uh, we didn't get concrete down in there. There's some plastic there that it's just not great. It was a big pad to do and finishing at night was less than ideal. Um, but all that stuff, I feel like we can grind out and do a better, better with. But the, the biggest problem I have is that there's like, there's like hills and stuff. There's hills and valleys in here. It's not flat. Um, that's not something you can easily correct with what we're, with what, with, uh, with a grinder. Um, I was going to get a laser out here and kind of see just how different the certain peaks and valleys were, but it's just not great. Not great. So anyways, I could go on and on about that, but I don't want to be ungrateful because I'm grateful that there's concrete down. It's just a lot of money to spend to have it not be perfect. So what I'm doing today is I have to cut the expansion joints and it should have been done sooner but it was the weekend we couldn't rent this until monday um so uh we had some other issues the power trowel we picked it up and by the time we were ready to use it we tried to start it it didn't start and the guys are like yelling like yo we need to do this right now like it's curing come start this thing so i'm over there like pulling the spark plug trying to figure out what's going on with it and it didn't want to start and so the time it took me i called them and it was like 4 45 on a friday i was like look what, what do you, you guys you guys gonna send a tech out here like can i bring it back well we can't rent you another one all the other rental places close at five on a friday so i'm like what do i do right what do i do so um i was like can i fix this They're like yeah do whatever you gotta do to make it work so i'm taking the spark plug out messing with the carburetor finally got it to start that took us uh, 30 minutes which was probably um the concrete had already started to cure in that one spot and so we were a little bit late getting that going so that was really frustrating anyways so when i went back today i was like look, look guys this is a big problem like you rent me a machine that doesn't start like i shouldn't have you work on your machine when we're on a tight timeline trying to make this happen anyways they basically gave me the rental on this for free to make up for the other one but i'm actually going to try and ask them if they'll rent me a concrete grinder for free or for half price so when i go to to grind this but i'm gonna deal with that later this week um, for now, saw joints today, saw joints. Oh, the other thing was uh, there was an hour and 15 minutes between trucks. So we're pouring actively, the pump's sitting here waiting. And then between, there was three trucks and then between the next three trucks, there was an hour and 15 minutes to the point where the pump guy's like, yo, this stuff's starting to set up in my machine. Like this is a problem. So I'm calling and yelling at the, the pump or not the, the concrete company. And they're like, oh, they're on their way. They're on their way. And it still took another 30 minutes after they told me that. So that also added to the problematic, you know, when you're trying to cure a pad like this, you're trying to trowel it and stuff, and it's curing at different rates because that side got poured, you know, an hour and a half different than that side. That makes for difficulty in, in curing. And I think a lot of what happened back there, because we left at 3.30 in the morning and it was still wet. That hour, that hour difference probably would have made a big difference on that. And they brought us a truck that was super wet. So we pumped in a bunch of wet concrete in that corner. So there was a, a mix issue and a delay and uh, a lot of that added to this. I mean, obviously it's not perfect. It wasn't finished perfectly, but the but those delays did not help at all. So really frustrating, but today's the day to cut. So I'm gonna do that. On the first couple cracks and there's probably no coincidence that it's right between the uh, four inch slab and the six inch slab there's one crack in that doorway and then another one right here outside the doorway they're basically right in the same spot um, you know, going that way between the, the thick and thin slab, maybe because they're drying at different rates. I'm not sure. There's no reinforcement through there. That's the one spot where there's no reinforcement. I doubt that matters, though, for being like a surface crack. But what everybody says, all concrete cracks. It's just a matter of where and when. So that tells me that it's drying. I can still see wet spots, you know, like it's evaporating up through the top. 
So I really need to get these saw joints cut like ASAP so it doesn't crack anywhere big over here. So I'm gonna get back to it. So when it comes to cutting here, um, obviously one of the big concerns is the uh, PEX tubing in the floor coming in contact with the blade, right? So we don't wanna go too deep, but we wanna go deep enough where it can create a line where the cracks will wanna follow and not start random cracks. So um, the six inch slab on this side, if I remember correctly, the, the rebar and the PEX was pretty deep in here. I was watching when they were pouring and it ended up way under there. I'm pretty confident that all of it is at least like three to four inches down. Um, the blade depth on this should be about an inch and a half. I'm only going about three quarters of an inch because I'm scared. Uh, but as I was walking across here, coming back, I saw a little bit of red in here, which freaked me out because the PEX tubing in this area was red. And so I'm like, maybe we hit one and it pulled up some of that uh, PEX tubing and mixed it in with this concrete dust. Just a little bit of red. I can't see it now because I've already kind of fluffed it around just a little bit. I don't know where else that would come from. So that has me freaked out. So then I go look at my, um, I made kind of a video walkthrough of like where the stuff was in relation to different, different landmarks inside the shop and also took some measurements. And uh, my last PEX tube going this way that's red is about lined up with that door. And I saw the stuff over there. So we should be outside of that zone. And I was cutting that way. So there's no way that red dust would have gone back there, I don't think. But I'll probably have to go pressure test that tube now because I'm really worried about it. it. Makes me worried about cutting the rest, but I'm gonna have to cut them. So I'll just keep going. First line down, got it cut, looks pretty straight. Hey Google, is dust from cutting concrete dangerous? According to industrial vacuum, when these materials are dry cut, they release silica containing dust into the worker's breathing zone. Regular exposure to this hazardous dust can lead to the development of silicosis, a deadly and incurable lung disease. Okay, so we need to snap another chalk line. We're going on the center of each one of these posts is where we're doing our, uh, our cut. So I think we have 10 feet, 12 feet, 10 feet that way. And then this way it's 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, all the same. Okay, grab the chalk line. Chalk line, right there. Okay, we'll walk it out. Chalk line, chalk line, chalk line, chalk line. You gonna come step on this side, Adam? Okay, come put your foot right here. You got it? Okay, now don't move. What? You <laughs> you love when I do the chalk line. Okay, make sure we got a decent line. Yeah, that's a decent line. Okay. Chalk line, chalk line, chalk line, chalk line. You can reel it in. So we got some stains here from uh, some stuff I set on the floor while it was drying. So I think what was happening is everything was drying around it and that wasn't allowing evaporation to come through. So I'm moving all this stuff now. Hopefully it'll clear up. So that job wasn't too bad. Did the whole shop, cut it, with the help of my two boys, just chalk lining and uh, spotting. And it took us maybe an hour and a half, if that, to do, what did we do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Um, 
yeah that's not too bad at all this one right here this one right here we stopped it right there because I didn't want to go through the drain and I didn't want to get into this pad right there so um, that's where I had Alton spot me and I said Alton don't let me touch that spot and we got it I'll just take a I'll take my uh, my four inch grinder I've got a masonry blade on there and I'll cut that by hand to open that up but um, hopefully this gives us what we need to uh, control the cracking I really don't want a big crack in the middle of this pad um, but I'm gonna get it all swept up and cleaned up probably hose it down get some water on it and see how that does maybe scrub it around I don't know yet I've got to figure out what I want to cut inside here I've seen people do like decorative angle cuts so it looks like tiles and then you put grout in the cuts um, I thought about that but the problem is I really don't know what we're gonna do if we're gonna grind this down if I'm gonna coat it I don't know exactly maybe I don't do any cuts at all right and the coating just fills in the cracks so there's the haze after blowing it out a little bit with my Milwaukee blower that stuff likes to hang out definitely if you're gonna do this wear a mask I've just been uh, I've been doing one of these makes it a lot harder than if I had a proper mask and you think after all the COVID nonsense sorry can't say that you think after all the uh, C19 stuff I'd have some masks laying around but I wasn't that guy um, but you probably want like a proper N90 or whatever they're called N95 mask so after cutting all those lines obviously it left a lot of dust which uh, I ended up breathing in but it was nice to put a broom to it I really enjoy sweeping the shop and so this is kind of like the inaugural sweep for me to really uh, you know put those bristles into the concrete and, and get it going All right, fast forward a little bit. Um, I'll tell you kind of how everything went down with the concrete. That's all settled and done with. It's been almost a month since we poured, but uh, instead of making another video about it, I'm just gonna put it at the end of this video. Um, so the more I think about it, uh, I'm unhappy with how it turned out, but not terribly unhappy. So it's this, it's this weird spot I'm in and it's like, okay, well, who's, whose fault is it? Whose problem is it that it didn't turn out perfect? And, you know, I can point the finger at different at different things in different circumstances, different people. But at the end of the day, it's kind of shared across everything, right? So one thing I had to do was call the concrete supplier because the hour and a half that we waited definitely caused problems for the finishers. Which when I complained to the finishers, they're like, hey, we had problems with the concrete. So um, I called that company. I said, look, like, it's kind of a problem. We had some issues. Some of it was wet, and you guys had an hour and a half delay. Based on that, I would like a significant discount. Um, so the guy came out. He looked at it, and he's like, here, here look, here's the notes I have. First of all, um, the hour and a half, our plant was down. We take responsibility for that. Second of all, it looks like the first three trucks were a four slump, and then the fifth truck and sixth truck were a 5.5 slump, which is how much water there is in the concrete. Um, and I said, well, why would they go from a four to a 5.5? He's like, well, you must have ordered that. I said, there's no way. I, I didn't order that. I didn't make any changes in the middle of, you know, pouring. It doesn't make sense. If you're pouring one slab, why would you go from a four to a 5.5 slump? And so um, that was why it was so wet, which caused it to not want to dry, which made us stay up till four in the morning finishing the concrete, right? So I can't pin that on the finishing guys. I definitely think that they could have done a better job in certain spots. Um, there's peaks and valleys, water collects in certain spots. Um, it's not perfectly level or flat, which I know no concrete is the finish is pretty good on the shop side, but not perfect. There's some, some spots. And then, uh, on the office side, that's just kind of a whole mess, but that can be covered. Luckily, like that is something that I can deal with. Uh, the shop, I want it to be really smooth, which it is when we squeegee it, it looks really good. Um, there's just certain spots that need to be cleaned up. So, um, the concrete supply i was supposed to pay 14.5 i think i'm going to end up uh about 11. so he did give me a, a pretty a pretty pretty good discount on that the concrete finishing um i originally thought that i was going to be paying 4600 and um, i thought that was a little bit steep then it turns out that i misunderstood and they wanted eight thousand dollars which i think is way too high ridiculous we settled on 62, so I paid him 62, and it kind of, I'm not not super stoked on that, um, the way that ended up. But it is what it is. I, those guys worked really hard. 
but I think that's a lot of money for what they did and for how it turned out. That's something that will always bother me, but it's construction. It is what it is. What can you do? I've heard stories of people, you know, paying people up front and then having them run off with their money or just getting completely terrible. I don't feel like it's that. So I guess, you know, um, could be worse, but it's just a tough pill to swallow. It's, uh, like I said, it's my first time, first experience. I'm not used to it, but um, keep moving on. I'm saving a ton of money in other areas, and so if I end up spending more in certain areas, even if it's not a good deal, uh, it's the law of averages, right? Everything kind of averages out, but that's it for the concrete. I'm glad to have concrete. Um, it's not cracking in the shop side. Uh, it seems like all that's pretty good. There's a lot of metal in it. It's pretty good, but it's just like there's some stuff that's always going to bother me. But that's how it goes. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I've got more videos coming. Process is coming along pretty good. I really want to show you how things are going. So follow along for the next video. Um, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment what you think about this whole this whole process with the concrete. And if you got any stories about your process, I love I love reading that when people put that. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye.